Hello and welcome back to Drive Driver Driven. I'm Humble and we're back on the Plunicorn project. Uh, but today is a bit something special. Uh, what I wanted to do is uh, really demonstrate the differences between the Evolution and the RS. Uh, previously, uh, when I built my car, it was the Ultima Evolution, uh, which at the time was the, the pinnacle Ultima that you could get. Uh, and it was an upgrade from the GTR before it. Now, for the rebuild, Ultima released the Ultima RS, which is their new Pinnacle car with a lot of changes from the Evolution. And some of those changes I'm going to be able to show you today. So let's start off with the nose, specifically the front clamshell and the front splitter. So here we have the noses side by side. And when you're looking at them like this, uh, A, you can really see the difference between the old color and the new color. So the old color is uh, Heritage Blue, which Ultima no longer manufactures. Uh, there's a couple reasons for this, mainly going back to uh, difficulty in cleanly producing the color and some of the health and safety rules that changed with the pigments uh, that are used to make that color. On the right is Pacific Blue, and this is a new color that I worked with Ultima to make. Uh, since we couldn't do the Heritage Blue anymore. Uh, if you are ordering an Ultima, you can choose from any of the factory colors, uh, but you can also work with the factory on your own custom color, which a lot of people don't know. Uh, back to the Evo nose, there's a few things that uh, really stand out as far as the difference. So mostly it's down here where the splitter attaches. The splitter actually does attach to the bottom of the clamshell. If we look up underneath, you can see this uh, sandwich, which is a, like a carbon foam sandwich. And you can also see it's taken rather a lot of abuse over my year of driving it around town and track days. Uh, and this is what happens to it is you just shave it down to a knife edge. But it doesn't cover much. It goes into the wheel wells and uh, right here in this area is where uh, the floor pan would start for the radiator, like the bottom of the radiator area. Um, also with the nose, these are the old headlight designs. For the Evo, everything was upgraded to LED. So you had LED turn signals, uh, daytime running lights, and your high and low beams. Uh, and then the other significant change is that I ran uh, fender mounted mirrors, uh, which gave a lot more positive visibility around the side and the back of the car than the door mounted mirrors did. Uh, and that's really how the nose has looked for uh, really the past 20 years just about is uh, from the GTR going all the way forward through the evolution. Uh, the nose has always pretty much looked like this. Uh, the other big point of this nose is that your pickups are right down in here in the corners. So all of the aero load, all of the weight is transmitted from the nose down through these pivots. Uh, everything that was on the splitter, all of that stuff comes down through these pivots. Switching over to the RS nose, you can immediately see uh, some big differences. The lights the missing chin, and one of the biggest differences is these huge fender vents now. So starting with the lights, it's uh, kind of an all-in-one uh, sealed beam unit with your high-low DRL and uh, with the new turn signals uh, that the RS comes with. Uh, another big improvement, speaking of the headlights, is you have these fans here, and that helps demist the lights. Uh, if moisture gets in there or anything like that, uh, which was a, a potentially big problem with the Ultima. You'll see a lot of the cars uh, suffer from that in rainy days. Moving on to the front of the car, obviously there's no chin anymore because it's now the splitter and the pivots are now up here on the nose. So all of your aero load now is directly on the chassis and the pivots only need to really support the body and what little downforce comes off of the top of the nose. Another change is these vents here. So if we look underneath, 
we have these openings which bleed off static pressure that's in front of the radiator uh, and allow it to exit topside on the nose, uh, which helps uh, improve airflow through the radiator just a little bit by reducing some of the stagnation in front of the radiator. Uh, and then likewise, these large openings for the wheel wells allow a lot of air out of the wheel well and over the top side of the car. Uh, something that's a little more subtle uh, until you try to fit the panels is this area on the body. On the Evo, this area is actually raised up. Uh, I would say maybe an inch to an inch and a half uh, versus the RS. This area is quite a bit lower now. Um, and you'll see this area especially seems to dip down. And then this whole area of the nose sits down lower and hugs the radiator frame tighter than it used to. Oh, one of my off-camera additions was the bonnet stay, which just bolts down here into the cross tube and then up on here on the clamshell. Um, it's a little bit longer in the RS than it was for the Evo models. Uh, mostly that's due to the fact that uh, now with the splitter chassis mounted, you don't have to worry about tipping it into the pavement. Uh, so this uh, front of clamshell opening can be quite a bit bigger. Uh, that makes things like getting to the brakes or the rack or anything up in the nose uh, much, much easier than it used to be. So I really like that. Now, as far as fitment goes, uh, what we need to figure out is if our radiator will fit in this opening. So if I close the hood carefully, as that scoop comes down, you can see where it would rest in there uh, right behind the radiator. And I've been warned that with my updated radiator and my different cooling package that it may not clear this area. And uh, that was actually a problem on the Evo and I had to uh, trim the side scoop and then the back of this scoop just a hair to get it to fit. So I might have to do that again. So I'm going to grab the radiator and we'll test fit it in the car. All right, radiator's in place. Uh, you can see, so this is the uh, larger CNR radiator uh, with the uh, much larger fans. I believe these are like 4,000 CFM fans or something crazy like that. Uh, but they're twice the depth of the RS fans. And that's really what uh, probably won't clear. So uh, let me lower down the hood ever so carefully. Yeah, and sure enough, uh, it looks like the side clearance is okay. But we're hitting up in here. And again, that's the area that I had to trim on the Evo. And uh, it looks like we'll need to trim about an inch back. Uh, just over to the sides here. And so uh, I'm going to draw that up and trim that out. All right, a quick in and out of the radiator. Got our uh, cooling shroud or, or vent uh, cleared. I just chopped off three quarters of an inch here. Uh, but what I found was when I lower the hood, uh, the rear has enough clearance to close, but now it's interfering up here on top of the fans. Uh, which means that this area under the hood must be lower on the RS than it was on the Evo. Uh, because in this location, the radiator and fans and everything cleared uh, with room on the Evolution chassis or the Evolution bodywork. So uh, kind of an interesting difference between the two cars. If I put this down carefully, you can see we have plenty of room here for it to go all the way down. But if I spin the camera around, this area under here is actually hitting the fans. Um, if we look under here, you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, there's just not enough room and the, the body comes uh, pretty much 
right into the the top of that radiator cage space what I'm going to need to do is when I have all the body back off again uh, I'm going to have to redo the radiator mounts so that uh, this top edge of the radiator sits flat with this plane which means uh, redoing the front radiator mounts and maybe even redoing uh, the rear radiator mounts on the floor uh, we'll see uh, even if I put thinner fans here I'm not so sure that the top of the radiator would clear up up here on the body so uh, I think I'm just gonna have to redo the mounts here on the chassis uh, of course the the biggest standout is the splitter so this is the RS splitter which is now chassis mounted and goes all the way to the back of the radiator frame and uh, it now supports quite a bit of weight uh, likewise, another change is these um, uh, ducts that come up into the wheel well uh, to draw, again, more air uh, and pull the, the splitter down on the sides as well as underneath. And then, of course, our larger brake ducts. Uh, these are definitely a bit on the overkill side. Uh, you really don't need them to be this big, uh, but... Uh, to feed plenty of cooling air to the brakes, uh, these will do nicely. Uh, like I said, I had to change my radiator mount. Um, this is sort of uh, just a bit that's uh, supporting the radiator to test fit. But previously, I had my radiator mounting up here. And I demonstrated earlier that it doesn't really clear the fans up in here on the nose anymore. So I need to bring these mounts down. And that's sort of what this piece is here is uh, we're working on uh, a new radiator mount. Uh, likewise, I'm going to also have to bring the condenser down to match. And I'll probably also mount it on this uh, piece of aluminum stock. Hi, cool. Hi. Hello. 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 Oh, my goodness. You're so excited. Oh, you're so excited. All right, so here's my solution for the front radiator mount setup. Uh, as you can see, uh, I've lowered the mount from basically underneath this bar and ran uh, this aluminum stock across, uh, and it ties back into the radiator frame down here and is supported by the, the top of our uh, nose mount. Kind of spread the load with a washer and uh, some soft washers on either side. Uh, and, um, you know, locked pretty solid in there. Uh, I'm gonna have to add some washers back into the back of this thing so that I can slip the, uh, condenser mounts underneath. And then, uh, the condenser is either, I'll have to make, uh, new straps that come all the way up here, or I'll move them down, uh, so they also go into this same piece of tube. Um... But the fab part of this is done. I'm probably going to paint this uh, like a gloss black to match the rest of the radiator frame. So it doesn't stand out when you peek under the, the nose of the car. But otherwise, this is a nice uh, kind of strong piece to support the top of the radiator. All right, from the front to the rear now. Uh, so on the left, again, we have the Evo. And on the right, we have the new rear RS clamshells. Uh, initially... I didn't think there was that many differences, but after looking them over for a bit, uh, there are actually quite a few. Um, let's start underneath here on the Evo. So again, with the GTR and the Evo, the rear in general hasn't changed all that much. Um, the big things are uh, the updated LED taillights. Uh, it has a smaller diffuser opening. And then if we look inside, the way the rear wing mounts from up on top here, because the, the wing is mounted to this surface, and then the load is transferred down with this brace down here, and then all of the arrow load, again, just like the front, goes through the mounting bolts, uh, the pivot bolts that uh, the whole clamshell opens on. Uh, looking at the rest of the back, of course, you can see the fire damage. It doesn't look too terribly bad. Uh, a lot of this could be cut out and replaced and repaired. But what you don't see is that uh, this opening has uh, kind of scrunched up and pulled in on both sides. So the arc 
that makes up the rear is now tighter than it used to be thanks to the heat of the fire. And then when you get into this stuff, like all this would have to be cut out and replaced. But as far as the rear goes, this is pretty standard fare for Ultima since basically 2001. Not a lot has changed on the GTR and the Evo in the back of the car. Coming now to the RS, just looking at the two cars side by side here, you can notice a number of differences. Uh, the rear vent openings in the back of the wheel well are a little bit larger and you have a larger one on top and the bottom. The light of course is different on the RS. Uh, you have this little uh, side vent, this scoop here on the rear fender. It's a minor detail. It doesn't help evacuate much air, but uh, I think it adds just a little bit uh, a busier look on the rear that it kind of needs uh, from this kind of blank panel. Um, I really like the look of that quite a bit better. Uh, moving up top, of course, you have the, the larger wheel vent opening to let air uh, out of the back of the car. Uh, you have an additional set of vents, these oval vents over the back to let heat out of the clamshell. Uh, heat is pretty much the number one enemy in the back of the Ultima. It gets really, really hot under there. Uh, and another mitigation point is these NACA ducts on either side, which help pull air over the, the mufflers, which sit here underneath the clamshell. Uh, and cool that area off. Uh, moving underneath, the diffuser area on the RS is quite a bit wider than it was uh, on the Evo generation. And there's a new carbon diffuser uh, uh, as an option for the RS that fits in this opening uh, that should help uh, that should help fill in uh, sort of stagnant air behind the car and, and improve the, the rear efficiency a little bit better. Uh, on the subject of wing mounts, so the RS has a chassis mounted wing. The, the swan neck mounts actually come through this opening here and they bolt to the, the side of the rear clamshell here in this area. And then when you close the clamshell, it shuts on a tube that's in the back of the chassis, so the wing rests on the chassis itself, and all of the aero loads then come down right directly into the chassis and not down on the body pivot as before. Uh, last but not least, for the roof scoop, this angle on the scoop in the rear clamshell is different on the Evo than it was on the RS. Um, you wouldn't be able to close the scoop because it would it would hit here uh, with the Evo model. And then if you look at the same angle on the RS, you can see that it's actually straightened up a little bit so that it has a nice clean shut line and it closes against the scoop uh, nice and tight. Uh, one other thing to add, uh, that's not on my clamshell is here on the Evo and GTR chassis, you have a center uh, retention clip or mounting clip that you pull down and close and it sits in a recess here and on the center tub equally. And that's your uh, one of your main mounts uh, or main closing latches for the rear center tub. On the RS, the same location uh, is is empty. If you're not running the roof scoop, you can put the same latch in, but if you are running the roof scoop, there's actually a catch pin that comes through the rear bulkhead, through the area down here on the rear clamshell, and it's a positive capture, so it can't actually lift, and you pull a pit pin through to finally release it. So that's a quick look at uh, uh, both of the rears and both of the differences. Uh, I think with the RS, it does merit uh, all of the little changes. There's just so many little things uh, that you begin to notice when you have them side by side that maybe you wouldn't notice if you just had it separately. Uh, I do like the look of the rear. I do like the look of the rear taillights, and I, I think that was a, a, a pretty bold move, but uh, uh, I think it really updates the look of the back of the car. 
Uh, just at first glance, you can see that the RS wing, which is in the front, is quite a bit bigger than the Evo wing in the rear. Uh, the big differences are A, uh, you have the uh, upgraded uh, RS end plates. These are the, the uh, curved uh, end plates uh, made out of carbon that you can get that are an option on the RS. Um, the other noticeable thing is of course the RS wing is top mount. So you have a swan neck uh, mounting method versus uh, the traditional uh, underneath uh, stanchions that you got on the Evolution. Uh, lengthwise, the RS wing is 70 and a half inches uh, wide, and it's got a cord depth of uh, right around 13 inches, 13 and a quarter inches. It's a very, very large wing uh, versus the Evo, which is uh, 65 inches. Uh, 65 and a quarter inches wide and about 11 and a half inches cord between the two elements. Um, so I would expect that the RS wing uh, comes with a performance improvement in a couple different ways, both in performance of uh, the aero elements themselves uh, and uh, the updated mounting method, which leaves more clean air under the working surfaces of the wing. Now there's a bunch of other differences between the RS and the Evo. Uh, different parts for the interior, things like the lift kit that uh, aren't available on the Evo series, and uh, a few other uh, items and odds and ends. Um, not to mention things like the side scoops, the side skirts, and other uh, external carbon bits like the uh, front canards or dive planes. Uh, those are all optional pieces uh, that you can put on the Evo as well. Uh, I've opted to install those for the RS, uh, whereas I didn't have them on the Evo. I think um, it's important to really point out the differences in these cars because it's not really uh, stated the, the difference between the Evo and the RS, and you don't usually get the, the opportunity to see them back to back or side to side. So uh, I hope that uh, you found this information useful and uh, if you're looking to get the RS upgrades, uh, I hope that uh, all of this information helps in that decision. Uh, for now, though, um, I think I'm going to call it a day. I hope you found this useful, and I'll see you guys next time.